In the 1940s, the chemical compound known as dichlorodiphenotrichloroethane, or DDT, for those without a PhD in chemistry, was developed as a hugely successful method for killing insects that spread disease. But then evidence began to grow that it might be well killing us too. So what could be done with all of the DDT? It seems at least one company thought the best thing to do was to dump it in the ocean off California. Here's what's happening with that now. Marine scientists say they have found what they believe to be more than 25,000 barrels containing DDT dumped off the Southern California coast near Catalina Island. According to a report released on its website by the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, the barrels were discovered by two autonomous underwater vehicles used to map the sea floor. Found at a depth of 3,000 feet, Diana Aga, a chemistry professor at University at Buffalo who was not involved in the study, told the Associated Press that if the barrels had not leaked, they could be moved to an area where it was safer to dispose of them. DDT was developed in the 1940s as an insecticide, but banned by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in 1972, owing to its adverse environmental effects. Today, DDT is classified as a probable carcinogen, according to a briefing on the Environmental Protection Agency's website. There have been previous indications of DDT in the water around Southern California. A 2015 study in the Environmental Science and Technology Journal found a high abundance of DDT and other man-made chemicals in the blubber of bottlenose dolphins. The scientists behind the new study are now questioning the long-term effects of DDT presence in the health of marine wildlife in the area, noting that DDT has already been shown to impact through several generations in humans. China, India, and North Korea all make vast quantities of DDT, with China and India selling it to African countries to be used for disease control, according to a review published in the Environmental Perspectives Journal. On balance, selling a chemical that can kill you as a way of saving you does seem like quite bad logic. But so does dumping it all in the ocean. And by the way, today's insecticides have their own problems attached to them too. Are you getting enough insecticides in your daily diet? Well, looks like honey is a sweet source for it. Neonicotinoid pesticides are showing up in honey on every continent with honeybees. Around 200 samples of honey were tested, and 75% were found to contain measurable levels of at least one of the five common neonicotinoids. The insecticide works by targeting crop-destroying insects' central nervous system. A number of studies have also found that the insecticide reduces and weakens honeybee hives. Pesticide levels varied between regions. In North America, 86% of samples contained pesticides. Asia, 80%. Europe, 79%. Africa, 73%. The Australian region, 71%. And South America, 57%. Bees and other pollinators are necessary to three quarters of the world's food crops, but have been declining in number in recent decades. Destruction of wild habitats, disease, and massive pesticide use are all contributing factors. Conventional pesticides are a double-edged sword that scientists are now seeking to replace with more natural RNA-based plant vaccines. Without pesticides, roughly 70% of the world's crops would be lost to pests, but such chemicals are toxic, killing insects but also affecting the rest of the environment. A new approach developed in Finland and France involves directly spraying plant leaves with an RNA-based vaccine that inoculates against specific pests or pathogens. The vaccine triggers a process called RNA interference, which prevents invading RNA strands from carrying out their functions, thus causing the pest to die. RNA molecules in the vaccine do not negatively affect the host plant. The RNA also has the added benefit of being biodegradable because it breaks down quickly. Instead of chemical synthesis, scientists use a bacteria-eating virus called a bacteriophage to help generate the RNA. But with no relevant legislation in existence to govern its use, it's hard to say when the vaccine will be available commercially. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.